what is up guys I finally got my hands on a mass drop control high profile these things are impossible to get the normal alt and control go on sale not a lot but way more than the high profile this one came online and was sold out in about 15 minutes I'm so lucky that I got one and in the switch configuration that I wanted so this thing has a beast of a case that's super heavy and it sits pretty well on the desk at a six degree angle, which I really like for typing and feels good for me. Um, so the main feature of this keyboard seems to re uh, revolve around the hot swappable switches. A lot of people are really excited about that and think that's really cool. And it's not a feature that I see myself using, but if a switch dies or something like that, they are easy to replace and you don't have to buy a whole new keyboard. So I just love the form factor of a 10 keyless keyboard and I prefer it more than the other ones but I think this thing looks sweet as it is and I really love using F keys and stuff like that. So I did purchase a Ann Pro 2 RGB to review and I just can't get used to not having my keys over here on this side and the F keys, which I use quite a bit for some funky stuff, but this thing is awesome. So if you guys can't tell, the RGB on this is amazing. It's super, super bright and it's very smooth. So they say this keyboard uses 100 hertz polling rate for the color, which is a lot more. So usually the polling rate is only 60 or 50 for other keyboards, so this makes it look um, a lot smoother. And you can't see it on my camera. So if you watch my last review of the Ducky 1-2, you can kind of see the flicker a little bit. I don't get any flicker on this at all when I film at um, a shutter speed of 1 50th, which is pretty cool. So. This connects to your computer via USB-C, so it's got one on the left and right side, and the one that's not in use can be used as a pass-through, which is pretty cool. So the cable included is a USB 3.0 cable, but when you use it for a pass-through, it is only USB 2, which kind of sucks, but isn't really that big of a deal. So the keyboard comes with a keycap puller and a switch puller, so you can get those out and swap them which I haven't done yet. I haven't tried to pull any of these out, but I'm gonna do later in the video. Um, but yeah, I've been using this for a little bit today and it works great. It's really easy to configure once you figure it out. Figuring it out from the start was kind of annoying, but I'm gonna walk you guys through that um, so it'll be a lot easier. But um, yeah, it's great and I have all my stuff configured how I like it. It has N key rollover like any modern keyboard does. It's not really even a feature anymore. I didn't even mention that in the last video I did about a keyboard because I'm pretty sure people expect that to be standard. So if you guys do find uh, when this is on a drop and you have the chance to buy it, it comes in a couple options. So you can buy the bare bones kit which comes with no switches and keycaps, just the PCB and the case. Um, you can buy it with, all right, I'm not gonna go through all these options. There, there's a lot and um, you can check it out once you check out anyways, but I happen to get mine in the Halo Clears and I wanted something that's feeling a little bit more like Browns, which they don't. <laughs> um, they are tactile, but they're heavy, so I wasn't used to that. But after typing on it, I'm starting to really like them and they're very smooth and just overall, I think they're pretty good switches. So that's one thing about this keyboard. It's got a nice, nice sound to it because of the sturdiness of this case. It doesn't rattle at all. Um, but yeah, so far I'm really loving it. So let's move over to the software and I'll show you guys how that works. Um, yeah. All right guys, so now that we're done messing around with the keyboard, let's go ahead and configure it. So I'm gonna have this linked in the description below. Um, here are some profiles I've saved previously, but we're gonna go ahead and start a new one. So any key can be remapped by clicking on it and clicking on another key. Um, obviously this I don't think is too useful because I want all my keys to be standard. But the most useful thing that I've come across is layers. So if we go ahead and look at layer one, these are all the keys and functions that'll work when you hit the modifier for layer one. So if we look, this is the modifier for la layer one, M01, and that's the position of your FN key. So to set the key to a modifier, you go to layer, Go ahead and click on that, select the layer, and now that's the modifier for layer one. I'll show you guys how to do it for layer two as well, and really any layer. Let's say I want insert to work for layer two. Layer two, there you go. Now when you hit that, any key that's set in here will provide that function. So what I like to do is set up my function or er, my media keys to be a little bit better than this. I think this is a stupid position to have them because you can't reach them all with one hand. I like to be able to hit FN 
and my key at the same time. So I set this to play pause, this to mute, this is going to be next track, this is going to be previous track, volume up, volume down, and I'm good to go. This is how I have them set up. And now, when I hit the FN key and hit these keys, they'll perform this function, so that's super awesome. There's a bunch of other stuff you can do, um, but I haven't used any of the other things other than layers. The, for modifiers, you can read into this a little bit more. Special is for changing the actual functions of the keyboard for brightness and stuff like that. Um, I like to leave those things standard. Now, for the coloring. I like the standard colors, there's a lot of good options, but if you want to set something to your own color, you can go ahead and double click. If you double click, that'll select everything. Um, you can even change the entire key board to whatever color you want, and then you can even change the rim to something else. So let's say I want the top to be teal and salmon, and then the bottom underglow to be scrolling RGB. There you go. So once you're finished, go ahead and save that as a copy. Um, and click compile and download. Now this will download a .bin file that you're going to want to save for later because we're now going to go into the um, step of loading it onto the keyboard. So now that we've downloaded the Mastrop control uh, bin file that saves our profile for all of our key changes and color changes, I'm going to go ahead and open up a folder and I'm going to name this loader. You can name it whatever you want. And I'm gonna drag my profile into this folder because we're gonna have to download some more stuff alongside it. So if you read right here, Windows need these two files. So go ahead and download Applet Flash, move that in, um, and MD loader underscore windows .bxe. Now that we have all of this stuff in here, we're good to go to load it. So what you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and click Command Prompt. And from here, you're going to go to the folder that you installed all of the stuff on. So my loader folder, which is in my documents. And if you aren't familiar with how to navigate Windows, you do CD documents, um, CD again for the name of the file loader. And to see what's in your current directory, you can type dir. So here's all of the files that I currently have in this folder. So now we're going to want to run it. So what you do is you type MD loader. Actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and change the name of our bin file to something like default. Now that that's named default, it'll make it easier so we don't have to type out all that junk. So let's start over for clarity. Go ahead and type MD loader underscore windows dot exe dash dash first dash dash download the name of your profile, so mine is default.bin, dash dash restart. Now from here you're going to want to open up an on-screen keyboard or something because you're going to have to hit enter one more time. So I open my on-screen keyboard. Now you're going to want to flip your keyboard over and there's a little pinhole on the bottom that'll restart your keyboard. Once you click that in, it should go dark um, from there. Now once your your keyboard has gone dark, go ahead and click the enter key. All right, now that I clicked enter, it should say writing firmware complete, booting device success, and closing port success. Now you notice your keyboard should come back on with your new lighting scheme, and all of your macros should work. So yep, there's volume up, volume down, let's go ahead and play something. Ooh. Um, and they work perfect. So that's it for the video guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe and you guys have a good one.